Titi Suarez, and welcome to my first edition of Go Getters. It's a series about women empowerment featuring women in the entertainment business. We break down what it's like to get out of your own way, how to really be successful in the music industry without compromising yourself. I hope you enjoy it, and make sure you check out the next series. Working with, obviously, Dame Dash in the beginning, Jay-Z, you know, we, we look at these powerhouses, and we're like, how do you deal with the ego? Is there ego involved? How, how does a woman's perspective jump in between all of that? We are built for dysfunction. I mean, it's just what it is, right? Um, a lot of times, I mean, people say ego, right? But if you're chartering, you know, territory that's never been chartered, you're probably extremely fearful, right? You, you could say, oh, I'm built for this, you know what it is and all, but no, we don't know where we're going. We don't know what's on the other end of that table. You're pushing yourself through to get to that other side. And sometimes ego is what's pushing you to the other side or bravado. I won't even say ego because when you build friendships with people and you build intimacies with people, you get to see the, the entire layers. person. So you know the motivation behind that. And yeah. Or the enough. need to succeed. And right, and, and you know, you get responsible for first five people, then 10 people, then 25 people who are all looking at you as if you're omnipotent, you have all these answers. And now that's a whole nother pressure that you have to live up to. So in those situations, when I see the ego, if you want to call it, rise as highest, that's when I want to be in most support of you. Because I feel like that's when you're coming to a challenge. And then I find out how can I dissipate some of this that you're going through? What can I do right now to make sure that we all have the same goal and we get there? Yeah. It's really not about me. So when, you know, and that's another thing. So if you're yelling at me, which we all know how that is, you're, if you've ever been a bridesmaid, if you ever helped your girlfriend get dressed for a prom, and she's like, and you know, you just I say like, hey girl, a little tight on the waist, and she's like, I'm out! And you're like, <laughs> she doesn't mean that. Like, you're like, she's under pressure. She's trying to get ready. You're not gonna not speak to her again. Yeah. And you know exactly why she said it. Like, now you could be yeah. selfish and say, Why'd you speak to me like that? Yeah. This is her prom night. Fall back and let her have her moment. You want to talk about it at brunch on Sunday and say, I'm glad you had a great night, but if you ever talk to me like that again, we might have to, but it's, yeah. there's a time and place. How did you get artists, per se, not just artists, but people in general, how did you make them comfortable enough um, to say, Shock, I know Shaka got this? When I talk to so many people in the industry, they all speak very highly of you. I know that Shaka got it. I'm cool, like, Shaka got it. Shaka's handling it. How, how, how did you build that trust with artists? Yes. It's funny, but people say that to me all the time. If, if I'm not there, Shaka makes a decision. Let Shaka make the decision. Like, how, how did you build that trust and that like rapport? I might be on drugs or something. I don't really, <laughs> who is that? I don't know. I mean, I, I make mistakes all the time. I think it's really, I don't think it's about making the right decision. I think that it's more about making sure that the person knows that you're there even when it's going to be messed up. Mm. You know, so I have messed up a whole bunch of stuff. But I don't, I tend not to run away when I do that. I'm still there and, I'm, and I tend to bring the problem to the forefront so that we can fix it. Um, years mm -hmm. ago, as I'll never forget this, there was a video that I, that I was working on and they told me they wouldn't start the video unless I signed this paper for $77,000. And I was like, oh, I am still in the hood, like $77,000, about five of my friend's salaries combined. But I didn't, you know, know what to do, so I signed it. And, you know, the woman came later and said, you know, well, Chaka signed this thing for $77,000, so you guys have to pay it. And I was like, I definitely did that. And then, you know, I told the story. I was like, listen, this is what happened. They told me to sign $77,000. And, and, you know, I think it was a mistake, but, you know, blah, blah. And I'm like, eh, my eyes are welling up. And I'm like, oh, my God, I think I, I was, it was just too much. I was choking. <laughs> There were no cell phones, so all I could do was walk back and forth and talk to myself. And Jay just said to me, oh, so you like spending my money, huh? And I was like, I'm going to die today. And, then, and I was like, no, I really didn't know what to do. And I just, I thought out of everything, it was the best choice. And he's like, all right, calm down. We're going to fix it. And then he's like, now, don't, and it's a lesson. Like, he's like, don't put your name on anything. Once you sign it, you know, whatever, whatever. And it was my lesson and his lesson. He's like, oh, I'm glad. And he's like, did you sign it? And at that moment, I guess he thought I would lie or whatever, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> and that was it. Kind of built that trust of like, yeah. at least I know you'll tell me what happened. And yeah. Then from there, like, we'll fix it. Yeah. So it's not always the one-sided thing, but just like, and, and artists go through a lot of ups and downs and and that was yeah. social media rumors, this that whatever. 
dad's family, but financial issues, and you just try to be an upstanding person and the type of person. Yeah. So I know women can be very competitive sometimes, and I just want to know how you go about forming relationships with people that you are just, you truly respect and you truly admire, and you just want a mentorship. You don't want to step on anybody's toes. You just really want to learn as much as you can from that person without it being a cat fight. Like, how do you go about forming those relationships with women? Um, I think it's exactly what you, what you just said, forming those relationships without the cat fight. I'm with, I'm with Shaco on that one. Like, I, I don't got the time of the day. I'm really about putting the points on. So I, I get a lot of people that come by my office 24 hours a day, a lot of different interns. Like, hi, I'm such and such. Hi, I'm such and such. And um, for me, it may come off like I'm just not paying attention or I'm deep in thought. Or, but it's the ones that keep coming back that I take a liking to. And I'm like, Wow, what do you come in here and sit down? Oh, really? So you do this? You could do that? Oh, really? Like, so it's just about, you know, putting in the hard work and people pay attention to that. But also, I just, it's really a little uh, disturbing to me that every time people are speaking about women meeting with each other, there's this catty competitive. Uh, like, where are these chicks that y'all are meeting? Like, I just don't understand where are y'all? I got to say, I got to, maybe, I, I, I'm just saying, I, and I'm going to be honest, the average person that you meet is going to be nice to you exactly. or be nothing to you. Exactly. So if you take nothing as caddy, sometimes you got to look at yourself, and I'm not saying that directed to you, but I'm just saying, like, if I'm busy, and you happen to decide that that's the magic moment that you want to come up to me, you might not get a personable answer yes. from me. It has nothing to do with you. I'm doing something. Now, if you want to walk away and take that message as caddy, or you want to say, wow, I want to meet this woman who's doing something, so nine times out of 10, the reason why I want to meet her is because she's doing something, so she might be busy every now and again when I go to meet her. But when I do have a moment, because I'm the type, I won't, I could come back to you three years later. Like, people might say, oh, I really want to, there's a girl who works for, worked for me. She, I met her in a thing very similar to this. And she said, how do I get into the music business? And I said, well, you know what, here's my number. Come meet me at 10 o'clock. I forgot I told her that. <laughs> so she's in my lobby. And they're like, there's a girl named Nicole downstairs in your lobby. And I'm like, Ugh, her fault. She should have checked. But no, so I come, I come at 12, because I was getting a wash and said I had already. So like, she waits for two hours. She comes in. She tells me at this time, I want to work for Mary J. Blige, oh Beyonce, or Tedra Moses. Very wide <laughs> list of three people, right? So I said, OK, fine. You have to settle for Chaka right now. Let's get cracking. So she starts working. Fine. Six years later, somebody calls me and said, Mary's looking for somebody. And I said, oh, shucks. <laughs> Nicole, what you doing, girl? Get your bag. Now, Nic and Nicole has now worked for Mary for about six years. Wow. So Nicole probably doesn't know that I remembered that or anything like that. But some people are holding on to things. And you know, you, she might have been saying for the other six years that I didn't do anything. If I'm whack. But that's fine. When I call, and you know, people are doing things at their own pace. And God has given it to you when you, it's time. So I think it's just time to start looking at what is happening and not what isn't happening and not put so much on this thing because most people are not catty. Most people are not. Um, yeah, I, was, I did street team with CD 101.9, then there were RXP, and then I left and kind of found myself, and now I finally want to get back into the industry. Mm -hmm. um, I'm currently in school. I do have a three-year-old, and I know that you both are mothers. Mm -hmm. And one of the challenges that I'm facing right now is still having a career and still being hands-on in my son's life so that he's not with a nanny or with all these other people. I still want to have a professional and have a career, but still be a mom and still be at yeah. the soccer games, at the basketball games, at his, at his honor roll society thing, whatever. Um, how do you balance that without feeling like the guilt trip um, that's, that's that you missed something and, and stuff like that? How do you balance that work-life balance? Because it's hard as a mom. Fathers, I don't think they go through the same thing. I for me, I just, uh, you know, my son goes to this school where all the moms are there all the time. Like, oh, you're, you're at the 
fake cookie thing. There she goes again. Yeah. You're at this. There she goes. And I used to care so much, right? Like, oh my God, I'm missing it. I just learned, like, you know, that's just not our life. Like, and I just stopped feeling guilty about the shit. Like, listen, I'm sorry, I can't make it. Mommy has to work, you know? So don't you love this? Mommy has to work. Like, and I have a really good support system. Like my, I, my mom is the greatest and she understands and she gets it and I trust her with him 24 seven, seven days a week. But prior to my mom, I had a nanny when I was living in Virginia and I love the nanny 110%. I just stopped feeling guilty about it. I mean, there are things that you're just not going to be there for and you're gonna miss it. And it is what it is. I mean, I used to like, feel really upset about it, then I'm like, but these, these women, they can stay at home. Their husbands have millions and millions of dollars. And so for me, that's how I got over it. And there are things that are very important that I cannot miss, and I prioritize that. And there are things that I know, it's just another social event to have play dates. I'm not doing that. I think most mothers feel guilty. I just think that's just, you love your child so much that you just wanna be with them all the time and you just can't, right? Sometimes because they don't want you there all the time. But, so I, I, you grow up and you want the best for your child and you feel guilty, but you just have to do the same thing that you make good decisions, that's it. Make good decisions and let, with, you are with your child, make it count. Yeah. So that's yeah. what it is and it, you make it count. And I mean, obviously I used to worry all the time when I was gone, but my daughter's, 21 now and I can see that I mean she never been to jail there's still time but um you know it seems like we're doing you know it seems like we 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 we're, we were doing something a little bit right I, don't, I mean you know it's hard but you can't be at everything and even if you didn't have a career you can't be at everything right unless you're not a housewife so you just got to make good decisions thank you so much for coming out today I really do appreciate it before we go Shaka Closing words, if you can give two keys, two keys, we'll use Khaled's keys. <laughs> two keys of success, what would that be? Um, two keys to success would be tenacity, stay focused, continue to do what you're doing, it will pay off. And the other one is do it with gratitude and a smile. You are not doing it for external appreciation. You are doing it to fill your toolbox. And just remember that people build what no one can take away from you, okay? Someone can take away their praise. They can't take away the skills and the knowledge that you learn. So just stay focused on that. That's what I will impart on everybody. Cause you know, you, it really matters that you have a goal and you stick to it even in its worst times. And if you do mess something up, be, it's okay. You know, there's so many examples of big fails now, especially with social media. I feel so bad for young, you guys and, and the fact that you can't even go to the beach and have a wedgie without it following you like that. But like, just make it through all of that stuff and it's gonna pay off. <laughs>